Why are there two different definitions of the sync function? And here they are here. And I think this is something that can often confuse people. You can see the only difference is that on the one on the left, there's a pi in the numerator and the denominator. Well, let's look at these two different functions. Well, I've plotted them here. Of course, they both have the sync shape. And as you can see, it's just a scaling in the horizontal direction. So this one on the left here, uh, the crossings occur at integer values of x for this definition of sync. So they cross at one, two, three, four, and so on, and same on the negative. Whereas for this definition of sync, the crossings occur at pi, two pi, three pi, and so on. So why do we have these two different definitions? Well, let's look at one example where it's sometimes more convenient to use this one and sometimes more convenient to use this one. And let's try and understand that. Okay, so let's look at this square function in the time domain. It's a very common function, especially with digital communications. We know that its Fourier transform is a sync function. And if the base of the square in the time domain is of width capital T, then in the, if we plot it with respect to frequency f, then the first crossing of the sync is at one divided by t. The second crossing at two divided by t and so on. And of course, negative one on t on the negative side. So this is if we plot it with respect to the frequency in hertz. What if we plot it with respect to the radial frequency? And of course, radial frequency omega equals two pi f. So you can see there's a scaling. And now this might start to give you a clue as to why we're gonna be using these two different, or we might prefer either one of these two different functions up here. So in, if you plot with respect to omega, then you can simply substitute omega equals two pi f, and you'll see that the first crossing point in terms of omega is two pi divided by capital T. So now let's think about how we write these functions in terms of these sync functions. So if we write the function here in terms of the left-hand definition of sync, then we see that this function in terms of f is capital T times sync ft. It's a very convenient form. You're just see, simply seeing the relationship between f, the frequency, and t, the width of the base. If you wrote this by substituting in omega equals two pi f, then you'll see that it equals t sync omega capital T divided by two pi. This is, both of these are using this left-hand definition. What if we use the right-hand definition? Well, here is what they look like. So in terms of the frequency f in hertz, now if you use the right-hand definition, you would write it down as capital T sync of pi ft. But if you were to write it in terms of radial frequency using the right-hand definition, it would be capital T sync omega capital T divided by two. So I think you can see if you were interested in looking at the frequency in terms of Hertz, this left-hand definition of sync gives you a nice compact form where you don't have the pi appearing and you can see that direct relationship. If you were more interested in thinking about frequency in terms of radians, then you may prefer the right-hand definition of sync. Because again, when you're writing it down here, you don't have the pi appearing, and you can see the relationship between the radial frequency and capital T directly. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, helps others to find it. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos, and check out the description below. You'll find a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook where I'm on a search to find signals in everyday life.